Good morning. So glad, so glad we can gather this morning. Prayer, time to be together, community. A couple of announcements I want to pass on to you. Bible study is Tuesday at 1030, and anyone can join Bible study. You don't have to have done any study or reading ahead of time. You can just um, log on to the to uh, the, meet, the Zoom meeting at 1030. So to let you know that. There's also um, youth group this afternoon at 4 for any of our um, teens who want to log on and connect with each other. So that's at four. I understand Doug Moss has some kind of fun game plan for this afternoon. We're doing uh, Compline Wednesday nights at 6.30, if you'd like to join us for that. And that's followed um, by Kathleen, who is leading an Episcopal 101 class called um, Walking in Love. And again, um, you can just join that. They're reading a book, so if you'd like to see where they are in the book, you can check that out on the website, but it's not necessary for you to have to have read the book to join the conversation. I wanna thank all of you who have been completing the surveys that we asked. Um, I think we have about 50 surveys back, but we'd like to get more. Kind of help us know like, how to journey with you in this time, what, what can we do as a faith community to be together, to journey together during this really strange time? So if you would complete that survey, that would help us a great deal. Last night, we sent out a um, nativity e-note, and in that nativity e-note, is a quarterly report that we plan on doing every quarter to let you know how Nativity is doing um, spiritually and financially. And so I hope that you will uh, open that email that you got from Nativity regarding um, our quarterly report. And you can always reach out to me for questions. Um, so I hope you take a look at that. Well, let's begin our time together by uh, singing. Alleluia, sing to Jesus. And we'll be doing verses one, two, and five. Uh, hold on a second. Technical difficulties. Questions how 
Though that cloud from sight received him, when the forty days were o'er, shall our hearts forget his promise? I am with you there. Alleluia, sing to Jesus, is the scepter, is the throne. Alleluia, is the triumph, is the victory alone. Hark the songs of holy Zion, thunder like a mighty flood. Jesus, out of every nation, hath redeemed us by his blood. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord, the Lord is, is risen indeed. Alleluia. Before we breathed our first, O oh God, you etched our names upon your hands like stretch marks on our mother's skin. And those same hands that bear our lives will carry us home as we breathe our last. So even in our grief, O oh God, let every breath we carry within announce your goodness with praise unending. For you have made us to be your own, a people of your spirit with blessing on our lips. Therefore, sun and moon, stars of the sky, depths of the ocean, birds of the air, let all creation Bless, Bless the Lord. Lord. Bless be God for doctors and nurses, for scientists and researchers, for pharmacists and technicians, for social workers and caregivers, for all who endeavor to keep us safe. Bless, Bless be God forever. forever. Bless be God for grocery clerks and janitors, for restaurant chefs and fast food workers, for farmers and delivery drivers, for field laborers and postal carriers, for all who feed and care for us. Blessed be God, Blessed be God forever. Blessed be God for pastoral staffs, for clergy and religious who pray for us daily, for catechists teaching in creative new ways, for liturgical ministers tackling technology, for all who serve the domestic church. Blessed be God forever. Mm -hmm. Blessed be God for teachers and parents, for those who sing and those who dance, for musicians, artists, composers, and poets, for comedians, actors, and storytellers, for all who inspire and sustain our hearts. Blessed be God forever. And blessed be God for the human spirit that strives to live in more gentle ways that connects with others while staying apart, that weeps and laughs and sits in silence for the human family in deeper communion. Blessed be God forever. In faith and love, we ask you, God, let not this virus consume our world, but breathe your spirit in us again that we may praise you unceasingly with Christ our Lord from whom all things, good things come. O oh Lord, open our lips. And our mouth, our mouth shall, shall proclaim your praise. Glory, Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Oh, come, let us adore him. Alleluia. 
Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Not with the old leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once and for all. But he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin. And alive to God in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death. By a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die. So also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. You are the God of morning and evening. You are the God who formed us, who chose us, and loved us before we were born. You are the God powerful in purpose, hidden in performance, faithful in time. You are the God who speaks to this community of believers and calls us to carry your future. You are the God who is worthy of your song and our praise. Give us this day here in this holy place and strength to hope in you, to listen and trust in your voice among us, even in times when the world seems closed to all futures. We ask this prayer through Christ our Lord. The Psalm of the Day. Psalm 16, invite us to say it in unison. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I call upon him. The cords of death entangle me the grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray you save my life. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and your child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem, hallelujah. Let us pray. In your goodness, compassionate God, you reveal to us the path to new life. May we never forget your abundant mercy and care for us. May your word be our hope. May our lips speak your praise. May we live our days in your love and may we spend our lives in your service. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. invite you to listen to the words of our first scripture reading. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty 
that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were caught to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from First Peter. If you invoke as father, the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him, you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed through the living and enduring word of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now on that same day, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them. What things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were there with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said but they did not see him. Then he said to them, oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? 
then beginning with Moses and all the prophets. He interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while we were talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. And now I would invite you to sing with us, uh, with me, the Canticle of Zachary, uh, with your mics muted. <laughs> Now bless the God of Israel, who comes in love and power, who raises from the royal house deliverance in this hour. Through holy prophets, God has sworn to free us from all law. To save us from the heavy hand of all who wish us harm. Remembering the covenant, God rescues us from fear. That we might serve in holiness and peace from year to year. And you, my child, shall go before to preach, to prophesy. That all may know the tender love, the grace of God most high. In tender mercy, God will send the day spring from on high. Our rising sun, the light of thy for those who sit and sigh. God comes to guide our way to peace, that death shall reign no more. Sing praises to the Holy One, O worship and adore. You all might remember the story of the road to Damascus. It is the story of when Paul had a vision of Jesus and was so overcome by the glory that he went blind. The road to Damascus moment is an incredibly vivid and immediate experience of God that instantly changes your life forever. Many people in the Bible have road to Damascus moments besides Paul, like Moses, who experiences the burning bush, Isaiah, who was taken into God's throne room, 
the shepherds tending their flocks by night are overwhelmed by the heavenly hosts of angels. Each of these is a life-changing experience of God that floods the senses and sets one's soul ablaze with the Holy Spirit. But the gospel today is not about the road to Damascus, but the road to Emmaus. The road to Emmaus is the polar opposite of the road to Damascus. The road to Damascus is marked by sudden, suddenness, awe, intensity, and clarity. The road to Emmaus is shadowed by fear, uncertainty, grief, and delay. And then the final healing understanding that comes only in the aftermath. You see, this morning as we read the gospel, the disciples are really not doing so well by the time they get to the road to Emmaus. They're tired, physically and spiritually. All their hope has been taken away by Jesus' death. Their beloved teacher and leader seems to have failed. He was rounded up as a political prisoner and executed. Now what are they supposed to do? With grief and despair, there is at least certainty. Things are final, wrapped up, put away. It hurts that Jesus is dead, but at least it's over. Now they can go home, swallow their pride, and ask for their old jobs back. It will sting for a while to put up with the knowing looks and whispers behind their backs of family members and friends about how they went off with some itinerant preacher and left everyone in the lurch. But that will eventually blow over. It will take much longer for the tender memories of Jesus and the wild hope he inspired to fade but eventually they will, with time. Suddenly, there is no certainty. There are rumors circulating among the women of the disciples group that Jesus is by some means risen from the dead and everything is upside down again. It's somehow more painful to think of their friends being so deep in denial and crazed grief that they've made up this crazy story of a dead person waking up alive. It's too painful, really. Cleopas and his friend just want to go home and be left alone with their grief, left alone to try and put their lives back together. A stranger has joined them on the walk, but he seems quiet and kind. He asks them why they're so sad, what has happened, and they can't believe he doesn't know. How many times have you had that experience? Some great upheaval or tragedy has swamped your life, and you can't understand how the world continues to go on like normal. How is the earth still turning? Why is the sun still rising and setting? How can people look at you and ask you how you are? You try to not snap back with, how do you think I am? Because everything's falling apart. Seven miles from Jerusalem. That's where we find our disciples this morning, and that's where all of us have been at some point in our lives. Seven miles from Jerusalem and walking away. They're leaving the center of action, the center of their faith, the center of their hope. Jesus is dead, and they just want to get away. Here's where the road to Emmaus opens its secret balm to us. The road to Damascus may be full of flashy fireworks, 
but it often comes at a sort of random time, very fast, and then it's gone. The road to Emmaus happens to us when we really need it. Jesus comes to us when we think there is no hope and approaches us quietly, gently, lovingly, not caring whether we recognize him or not, just wanting to be with us and care for us. Jesus understands that sometimes we are so swamped by our emotions and our circumstances that we can't recognize him right beside us. And he shows us that that's okay. He will chase us down. He will find us on the road. He will stay with us, walk with us, help us step by step to see how he has never forsaken us. And he will not leave us now. Because notice what the first interaction is in this reading. Jesus himself came near and went with them, it says in the text. And then he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? Jesus is curious about what they're talking about. He seeks them out and says to them, talk to me. Tell me what's on your mind and on your heart. I think so often when we are struggling, we beg for a word from Jesus. And we forget that Jesus wants to hear a word from us as well. He is reaching out to us as much as we are to him. Our companionship and our problems that we know that can be so overwhelming and yet so small in the grand scheme of things, well, they're profoundly important to him. And he wants us to tell him about them. He even wants us to tell him when we're not sure we believe he's real and alive just like these disciples did. So he asks us to talk to him. And one of the most poignant moments in the Bible, Luke tells us of the disciples on the road. They stood still looking sad. We all know what that's like. We're carrying this burden internally, trying so hard to keep moving, trying to keep a stiff upper lip and not show that inside we may be losing hope or losing faith. When someone finally asks the question or puts a gentle hand on our arm and pierces that shell of pride and strength, we can't keep up the pretense anymore, and we stand still looking sad. It's a painful moment, but it's such a gift. That is the presence of Christ breaking through in the words of a friend or the kind eyes of a stranger. That is Jesus reaching out to us saying, you matter. Talk to me. I'm right here. And so when we think no one knows or no one cares and our only task is to stay strong and silent, we need to remember this moment. We need to quit fighting the unwinnable war of trying to shoulder on by ourselves when there's no need to. Jesus wants us to tell him what is making us grieve, and rage and fear and despair. We need to let our shield of pride be broken by his gentle, questioning presence. Because we need him most when we think he's furthest away. You see, the road to Emmaus is about mistaken identity. 
the disciples are walking down the road with the resurrected Jesus, and in their turmoil, they fail to recognize him. Think of all the other great moments of mistaken identity in the Bible. Joseph's brothers failing to recognize him when they come to Egypt. Isaac in his old age and blindness being unable to tell the difference between Jacob and Esau. Mary Magdalene thinking the risen Christ is the gardener and begging him to tell her where the Lord is. They're all marked by grief, pain, and confusion. Perhaps you're treasuring the road to Emmaus with the confused disciples, wondering how anything can ever be right again. Take comfort in the knowledge that Jesus is with us no matter what, no matter what part of the road we're traveling. We spend most of our lives on the road to Emmaus, sometimes confused, sometimes wearied, sometimes a bit heartsick. But when the disciples from the road to Emmaus finally do recognize Jesus, it is a moment of sudden revelation. And they know him. They know him in the breaking of the bread. As we walk this road, these ordinary days that feel so incredibly extraordinary right now, where we have struggles of faith, the road does always lead to one place, to the presence of Jesus. And it is in this presence of Jesus Jesus, who chases us down the road to ask us what is troubling our hearts. To ask us what's on our minds. Awakening us to the knowledge that he is always, always with us. Amen. I invite you to profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Blessed Lord Jesus, in this season of your resurrection, let us be made anew in your grace. Fill our hearts with your love, peace, and healing, and drive us to do your work in our lives. Risen Lord Jesus, be known to, be known us. to us. We pray for the church. In the Anglican Communion, we pay, pray for the Episcopal Church in Jerusalem and in the Middle East. In the Episcopal Church, we pray for Presiding Bishop Michael Curry, for Brian Pryor, our Bishop of Minnesota, for Craig Loya, our Bishop-elect, for St. Philip's Parish in Rice Lake. We pray for Dana, our Rector, for Kathleen, our Assisting Priest, for the staff and vestry at Nat Nativity. Risen Lord Jesus, bless them all. Renew the spirits of all leaders of the nations of the world. Make them mindful of all those who depend upon their wisdom. Show them the way of your love that they may resolve to strive for peace and justice. Risen Lord Jesus. God. God. You Lord, who love all that you have made,
Grant us the peace to protect the earth that you have given us for our home. Renew our will to preserve its goodness and to keep it beautiful and fruitful for our children. Teach us. Teach us. Lord of all mercy in times of fear and uncertainty, help us to see you in our lives. Enlighten us as we search for you in our lives. Let us be quick to believe in your redeeming grace. Open our eyes to recognize you in those whom we see around us. Risen Lord Jesus, be known, be to, known us. to us. Open our hearts to all those who suffer from any illness of the mind or body. Hear our prayers for those in need and for those who care for them. We pray especially today for Alma, who was diagnosed with cancer this week, for John Rose, home from the hospital and recovering. We pray for all those who are dying alone, that they may never know they are, that, 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 I'm sorry, that they may know they are a child of God and are never alone. Are there others? Risen Lord Jesus, care for them. Let us pray for those who have asked for our prayers, for healing and support for those on our prayer list. For Amara Strandy, Gabby, Jackie, Josh and Sarah Waters and family, Anna Tlugan, Rachel and Dylan Yeager, Karen Prescott, Eloise, Sarah, John and Teresa Curran, Janelle, Marilee Leonard, Frank, all the workers in the health field, Nancy S. and her husband, Jen, Evie, Dave, Bonnie, Tuka, Rebecca, Rob, Don and Nancy, Mary R., Chad M., Marlene Stock, Debbie Moran, Baby Logan, Joyce Reiser, Charlie, Rosemary O'Hara, Gary, Jessica Johnsrud, Arlene Ernst, Bob McKenzie, Joanne, Kurt, and Catherine Diner. Are there others? From the chat group, please pray for Alma, who was diagnosed with COVID this week. Um, praise and thanksgiving for John, um, who's home from the hospital and recovering. Uh, that's all I have on here. my place. Um, let us also pray for um, those who have died. Carla O'Brien, Wanda Nielsen, Lucas, Pat Williams, Adair Palmatier, Reverend James Jenkins, Fran, Pat Petit, Bob, Jean, Carl Diner, other others. Um, a holy death, um, peaceful and holy death for Larry, and pray for those who are dying alone, that they may know they are a child of God, never alone. And we'll also pray for a peaceful death for Crystal Baker and Jim Reiser. Your everlasting Lord, let us pray for those that we might do what is right, that we may not fail each other, that we don't speak ill of each other, that we may see you in every one we meet, that we do not call evil what is good, that we work for your desires and your desires only. Your love is everlasting. Lord Christ, accept our humble prayers that we offer to you in this season of glory. Fill our hearts with the faith and truth that you have made known to us in your resurrection. Let us be true Easter people, for you reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God always. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let us pray the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Merciful God, it is difficult to trust that life will return when there is so much to deal with all around us. Lord, help our unbelief. Guide us then to trust in your Son, who is the resurrection and the life for all who believe. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let us wish each other the sign of peace. Peace. Peace be with you all. Peace be with you all. Peace to you. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace to all of you. Peace, everyone. As we gather for our closing blessing, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. I invite you to stay after the closing hymn uh, for coffee hour, five or 10 minutes to just uh, say hi to uh, your friends at Nativity. So um, let's sing together the closing hymn. Mm -hmm. Joyful Easter time, away with sin and sorrow. My love, the crucified, has sprung to life this morning. And Christ, that once was slain, delivers his three day prison. I've made that bed in vain, but now is Christ arisen, 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 arisen. Death's flood hath lost its chill since Jesus crossed the river. Lord of all life from ill, my passing life deliver. That Christ that once was slain never ceased three day prison. Our faith had been in vain, but now is Christ arisen, arisen. A reason, a reason. My flesh in hope shall rest, and for a season slumber, till drop from east to west shall wake the dead in love. That Christ that once was slain, give first his three-day prison. 
how I faith had been in vain. But now is Christ arisen, 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 arisen. And may our risen Lord, our cornerstone, continue to bless us as we gather in faith. Though separated by distance, may we be close in spirit. And when we gather, may we always rejoice and be glad in the day you have made. Alleluia. Amen. <laughs>